Just as we got this going, we are live on all cylinders. So we're going to get this started right about. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Comic Book Club. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. I'm Pete. And we are coming to you live from a couple of places on the internet. We are live over on Crowdcast. We're live on YouTube and Facebook. Maybe you're listening to us later on the audio podcast on Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's all good. But I'll tell you what. This is Pete's got to go. He's got to move through this. He doesn't have any time. We got to go. get to names, bro. I got to get this names part over with so I can stop. It's weighing sweating. on him. It's weighing on yeah. him. Come this on, is man. The, Let's do the it. The most stressful point of Pete's week, month, excuse me, is reading these names. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I hate so, can I do I have a minute just like to no, set up what the No, we names got people waiting in the wings. Oh, Let's just go, gotta, asshole. Come oh, on. Okay. So, <laughs> not no explanation. Necessary. Here's a list of names, uh, thank you. and we're and as usual, like even though these are people who support us on Patreon, who we want to thank, we're not going to yeah. set that up in a way that we're thanking them. No. We're just going to read the names. We don't we thank them. We appreciate them, them we, so no, much. No, 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 we don't. We don't have time to appreciate the people. We got to go. You're wasting we time. Go. You're wasting time. We don't have time to thank the people. We don't have time to appreciate them. We don't have time to tell them that we wouldn't be able to do the show without them. We just got to go and read these names and jam out the names and then do the interview as quickly as possible, get through the trivia, then finish the show so we can go to sleep and then wake up and do our job and eat some breakfast, maybe do the... the Stop it! Order. Come on already! Say the first so, name, dude. All I'm Sorry, saying guys. is... <laughs> my, my, the... my two dads are not getting along right now, but they're fine. <laughs> and we're fine as a family. Here's a list of folks who support us on Patreon at the $5 and up level, starting with Pete. I hope you're doing okay. I hope this wasn't too stressful. Come on, dude. Oitis Larson. Aaron C. Hollis. Adam DeRose. Adam Harwitz. Adam Marks. Adriel Moreland. Elena Fontenot. Amanda Harris. Andrew. Andrew Preble. Andrew Tillman. Beercat PhD. Benjamin Brown. Carly W. Carrie Matthews. Chris Leatherman. Christina Jeremy Lowe. Christina, Christina Rensfield. R Christina Ooh. Rensfield. Chris Terlizzi. How dare you. Clemens Lua. Corby Dorby Doodle. Curtis Larock. Demand Ryan. Dan Snow. Daniel Cabral. Daniel Fuentes. Danny Heck. Debbie Gloom. Dennis Scott. Derek Mainhart. Doug Sotaway. Dylan L. J. Eduardo Martinez. Emmett Quish. Aaron Dorian. Jeffrey Risher. Gerard DeVillier. Isaac Carter. Jake Fry. James Connolly. James Kurtz. Uh, Jaron Townsend. Jason Donahue. Jeffrey Whaley. John George. Jonathan Jong. Jonathan McCool. Joshua W. Broxon. Julian Lobato. KC Newhaven. Kevin Grimes. Kevin Kleinrock. Kieran Broderick. Cody Thomas. Kyle. Luana Thomas. Lucas Sink. Mark Zeller. Matt Thice. Uh, Matthew C. Hernandez. Megan Thigpen. Michael Tillman. Nelson Kelso Martinez. Nick Grayson. Official CBC uh, Chef Brett Macris, a.k.a. Straight Bullies. Wow, extra words. Oren Dix. Pedro A. Rangel. Pete's Pretty Kitty. A beautiful, provocative ambulance. Red Mikey. Roberto Pelinata. Whoops. Sarah Schaefer. <laughs> Scott Carpenter. Scott England. Stanley. Tamela Rush. Taylor Bryan. Terrible Jason. The Big Flood. The Twelve Batch. Thomas Glenn. Victor Perez. Will Buchanan. William Leach. Zachary Backman. Zika's Viral Comics. And once again, thank you, everybody, for supporting us. You did it, Pete. You can take the rest of the night off. Patreon.com slash comic book club. If you would also like to support the show at whatever level you are supporting it at, $2 yes. and up. We appreciate it. Just to mention, you get access to our back catalog going all the way back to 2011 uh, through 2021. And I feel like that's a good opportunity to bring up another little item of business, which mm. is our next show is on December 20th, but December yes. 18th between now and then, is actually the 16th anniversary of Comic Book Club. Oh, uh, we've been man. doing the show, not quite yet, still a couple of days, 
but 16 years, which is absolutely wild. We don't have podcasts for all of it, but thank you all who have uh, stuck with us for the live show back in the day through this video show. We really, really, really appreciate it. It's awesome. We haven't changed a bit. Uh, okay, let's get to the guest already. Come on. Except oh for Pete's God. patience. <laughs> Pete's patience has diminished. Yes, there you go. I think they're very excited to come on now that you've yelled at us for a while. So I'll tell you what, why don't we bring them into the stream? They're two of our favorite creators working right now. They are the creators of Art Brute, which is coming out tomorrow, as well as one of our favorites, Ice Cream Man. Let's bring them in right now. W. Maxwell Prince and Martin Morazzo. Hello. Welcome, guys. Great to have you guys. Thanks for having us. Uh, oh, Thank my gosh. Uh, Ice Cream Man is one of our absolute favorite books, but... Let's first talk about Art Brute, which is coming out tomorrow. Actually, both comics are coming out tomorrow. But Art Brute is an interesting project because it's one that you worked on a very long time ago, pre-Ice Cream Ban. As far as I understand it, it's a remastered version of it, a new and revamped version. I, I don't want to get into spoilers too much, but I love the book. I thought it was very cool, yeah. and it's very different from Ice Cream Ban. So even if you are a fan of that, I think you'll find something new and fresh and different in this one. But... Talk to me a little bit about where you started with this comic and why bring it back now. Uh, well, first of all, thank you um, for the kind words. Uh, very nice of you um, and not required. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, uh, this book, Art Brute, is the first thing that Martine and I ever worked on together oh, wow. um i was a fledgling comic book writer with a couple of things under my belt um and i really wanted to do like a kind of out there art history um story because uh i love art history and i've um, always kind of I, I studied it in college pretty closely and i've kept up with it um and my appreciation of fine art uh into adulthood uh so this is back i guess seven uh, or eight years ago um i just kind of cold emailed martine and was like hey man um do you want to do this book uh fyi you're gonna have to recreate famous works of art edit them <laughs> expand Daunting. upon them draw uh, in your style which is why i'm reaching out to you but also occasionally adapt a famous style to your style this all sounds easy are you game um and uh he said yes so we we made that book um and unfortunately the the title of it um was changed right before it was due to come out um it, it the original version wound up being called the electric sublime uh, sort of a mouthful um and it came and went. Not a lot of people really knew it existed. Um, but we got the rights to it back. Um, and Martine and I have always thought, you know, there are early works of art, especially between two close co-creators co that, you know, um, probably don't deserve a, a re-release. Hmm. Um, but we, we always thought this still read as kind of new, that maybe it was a little, um, if we could uh be a little immodest um a little ahead of its time uh when it came out back in 2016 that it still kind of stood up and did good work where comics were concerned so once we got the rights back we asked image if they would be interested in doing this with us and they said yeah so now we've got this this really fun re-release with new covers uh brand new letters um each one has a collage cover by our friend alex ekman lawn as well Issue one has an uh, homage to Ice Cream Man number one as a either the C or B cover. Um, and then every issue has new material in it. Uh, uh, these little four page Silver Age style backup stories um, done by me, Martine, and our friend Chris O'Halloran from Ice Cream Man. So mm. that's a lot. But that's um, a lot. <laughs> that's, um, that's, that's my that's my pitch. Uh, Martine, I'm curious to hear from you. What was it like revisiting this artistically after all these years? Well, 
we always talk about it and, and we always thought we love this book so much you know i i, I re read it uh, every year or so or always uh expecting to find it outdated you know like uh, seeing a, i don't know like some panels or, or the story in general that thinking I, I won't like it this time and every time i finish it the whole four issues i said i love this book so much you know so this chance of republishing it is really amazing for us and uh, I don't know uh, we, we're really happy about it I love you going back and rereading it I feel like that's like us going back and re-listening to older podcasts something we, <laughs> I don't think would ever do so that's <laughs> fantastic to get into the sort of the content here it's uh, like sort of a Jason Bourne if everything was set inside the art world with a little bit of a, some fantastical twists is that a good way to describe it or how would you describe the book Oh, I'm not a I'm not an ad person, so I don't know how I, how I would describe <laughs> it. I think that's great what you just did. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, um, I, it, if I could read off of the um, the solicitation copy, it is a uh, <laughs> psychological uh, horror thriller in the art world. Um, nice part police procedural. I, I don't really know. It's um, <laughs> it's a really fun. It, it's a really fun um, story about art and art history and how art affects our consciousness with all these little dabbles of genre that we love, police procedural and thriller and uh, fantasy story surrealism. It, it kind of uh, touches on the edge of all, all that stuff. Um, Another thing I love about it is that art is sort of maybe the most powerful force in this world. Um, is that the world that uh, you wished we all lived in, or are we dreaming of that? No, that is the world that we live in, actually. Um, there it is. Art, art is the most powerful force, whether we kind of uh, recognize that or not. Uh, one of the things that uh, I really love about this book is how much it sticks with you after you read it. Um, I also kind of uh, feel like the main character. We're kind of like pulled into this artistic world in such a cool way. Martina, I'd love to hear like when, uh, you know, he was talking about the original pitch that you said yes to, um, it, the, the image of a different Mona Lisa like really kind of stuck with me and haunted me a little bit. It would kind of freaked me out to kind of see <laughs> it uh, uh, winking at me. Can you yeah. can you talk about like how it felt to kind of put your art on somebody else's already famous art? It felt amazing. I love <laughs> I, I, love I, I love challenges, you know, when I when I sit uh, at the drawing table. So uh, it was it sounded fantastic. It was a bit stressful because I wanted to make it right. And it was a bit hard to try to understand like a system we could use, you know, for representing this kind of work because uh, in, let's say in the comic book, we want to use the original Mona Lisa, but if, if, if I were to draw the Mona Lisa as a character, I would draw her in my style, not in Leonardo da Vinci's. So uh, that, that was kind of hard to try to uh, make it work at, at first, but, but I, I think it was more or less okay. Later on the book, we, we develop another styles and then I kind of mess with my, my drawing style a little bit trying to include like another uh, uh, forms of art like cubism or, or, or pointillism and, and and that's where when the game get a little bit more complicated but I, I think we kind of put it off more or less <laughs> I would agree you definitely pull it off uh, hmm. do you feel like revisiting this book does it make you want to do more of it or do you feel pretty happy with the issues that have come out or are going to come out I guess at this point uh, I think I could speak for both me and Martin, um, saying that we'd like to do more. Um, a lot of the realities of whether or not we do more are boring, uh, you know, economic stuff and, and how well the series does um, in this little relaunch here. And if we can uh, support four more issues or eight more issues, that would be really fun. Um, but yeah, we would love to. Uh, dive back in, as it were. 
I wanted to draw a little bit of a line not to swerve the conversation over to the other book that's coming out tomorrow, but between Art Brute and Ice Cream Man. In my mind, Art Brute is, it, this is only based on the first issue, obviously, but seems a little kinder, a little less nihilistic, a little more focused on an extension of superhero comics versus this dark reflection of literally anything that you want to put into the <laughs> world. But what what line do you draw? What connection do you see between these two books, one potentially growing out of the other? If any. Oh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, Darkness? I mean, the, <laughs> my, 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 my boring answer, you know, um, outside of thematics and um, that sort of stuff is that uh, what you see in Ice Cream Man is me and Martine really learning how to work together um, and become mm. co-creators. I mean, at the end of the initial release of our brute, um, we were really just getting to know, e know each other and we were really happy with the content that we were creating. And so we were like, well, what are we doing next? And so that's where Ice Cream Man sort of came in. Um, and so what, you're, what you see in Ice Cream Man is just the two of us we both like to experiment and uh, push push the the boundaries or the envelope a little bit, um, kind of learning how to uh, co-create comics. Mm -hmm. Well, well uh, oh, go could, ahead, Pete. Yeah, I just wanted to say while we're Everybody's talking about ice questions. cream, man, I just wanted to kind of say from a reader's perspective, there is uh, really something about the like when I first uh, get an Ice Cream Man comic and that like nervous feeling I get before I start to read it because I have no idea <laughs> what is going to happen. I know it's going to be creative. I know it's going to be a little scary, but I get this rush every time with a new issue where I'm just like, oh man, what is going to happen? What kind of ride am I go on? Uh, what kind of ride am I going to go on? It's such a creative like uh, uh, thing that you really push the boundaries on. Um, I would love to like. Do you guys just try to challenge each other with each issue to be like, let's go weirder, let's go darker? Or how do you approach that? If I may say so, uh, I feel the same whenever I get a new <laughs> from Will. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, sorry, if um... I. Go Making sure it. that my daughter gets gets her screen time. Yeah, no, she, <laughs> she seems really into it. <laughs> I have the opposite problem with my kids. They are trying to get on camera. But let me throw in my take on it. When I get a new ice cream in issue, I have that same tension, but it's like watching uh, your favorite magician. And you're like, can these guys pull off this trick again? And you have yet to disappoint me uh, in any way. It's unbelievable how you keep raising the stakes and even talking about comparing Art Brute and um, an Ice Cream Man, Art Brute feels like the concept is so interesting and it feels like an expansive world that we get to explore. And Ice Cream Man feels like it keeps getting more personal mm -hmm. or drilling down. I feel personally connected to the stories in a way that I don't find in so many other books. And I don't know how you keep drilling deeper into my brain. Is that a, <laughs> a can you please answer that question for me? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I do worry uh, with each subsequent Ice Cream Man script uh, that maybe this one is too sad uh, and this will be the breaking no. point um, mm -hmm. for our readership. Uh, no, I don't know. Um, I think, Mar you know, I, I, I can only speak for myself that I'm, uh, Ice Cream Man has been a project, you know, written through early fatherhood and COVID and all this sort of stuff stuff that's kind of you know weighs on the adult mind um so those stories uh really reflect where my head's at uh, and what i'm thinking about and dealing with day to day um so i'm glad i mean i'm not i'm happy they feel personal because to a large extent they are although there are some removes you know for the sake of art um but yeah art art breeds a little different huh it's um it's uh for for lack of a better uh phrase it's it, that that's that's franchise material that's uh <laughs> that's, our big, that's, that's our big expansive world um and ice cream man are just these these small little stories about people trying to to be okay and sometimes they're not okay um 
so yeah, they're they they kind of definitely do stand in opposition to each other. Well, I, I want to jump off of what Justin was saying a little bit. I feel like there's been a palpable difference in Ice Cream Man. I would say post issue twenty five, which, by the way, just to give a frame up for anybody who isn't reading the book, like we're intimating here, read it. It's it's well, read it. Yes, <laughs> it's essentially at the beginning. It's kind of like a horror uh, anthology that has a little bit of an overarching mythology that maybe or maybe not is there, as I think we talked about the last time you were on the show, and. Issue 25 was this big, again, maybe I have the issue wrong, but it was this big, like, bring the mythology together. What are we going to do? Even poking fun a little bit at the idea that there is an even is a mythology. And it's felt like since then it has gotten sadder, but it's also there's like the hope at the bottom of Pandora's box a little bit in some of the issues. It feels like where it, it hasn't been straight horror anthology to me necessarily since that point including without getting into spoilers this week's issue which is very much like almost questioning the nature of how do we keep writing this comic book is sort of how i think <laughs> um what's it been like switching into this mode if in fact this is a mode that you guys feel like you're switching to um <laughs> uh for me, uh, it's just been very natural, you know, like I, I'm not, I don't have some big, except for like the little like mythology bits. Um, I don't have a big overarching plan for Ice Cream Man. You know, I, I can't, I can tell you what I want to do um, in the last issue, but uh, how we get there is completely up in the air. It's just these kind of wow. stories that, um you know, kind of present themselves over the course of time. Um, and so, yeah, because we have that freedom that a lot of other books don't have in terms of like having to kick the can down the road and do all this continuity and, you know, set up for the page turn and for the next issue, um, we can tell these either sweet or sour little stories that sometimes kind of hit a different way. Um, and a lot of times that's because we're feeling a certain way and uh, so we just have it's really it's a function of the freedom that we have to really tell any kind of story we want in ice cream man, and that we're still um allowed to do so uh 33 issues in is is kind of wild to me uh i'm uh, curious martine and maybe this is uh for your partner here but there's been more and more easter eggs that are layered in for previous issues is that something that you sneak in or is that it, it is something you sneak in yeah, <laughs> most of them are my fault. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but many of them are on, on, on the script also. So we, mm. we mine's, uh, mine, the ones I, I decide to put in there are mostly just graphic stuff. Many times not, the, let's say, a, 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 just a character on the background, but not interacting with other characters. That's those are mostly from Will. So, mm. uh, but I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's fun for me, you know, it's like um, uh, with these uh, anthology stories that each one is another story, you know, to me it's, it's like important to keep it as a whole together, all of it. So making like every time you see a dinner, there's the character from issue three sitting somewhere alone, you mm. know, the, the uh, one hit wonder uh, or, or I don't know, like if you're in a park, I put some characters walking on the on the back and, and I think that uh, gives some sort of uh, a shared universe for the book, you know, even though we're telling a different story each time. So, yeah, I have fun with that. And then I place the, 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 the ICM letters everywhere, but that's just <laughs> pointless and uh, meaningless, but it's fun. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's great. Uh, not to continue to play admin here, but we, we, we love this book. And it, to me, it reminds, it's like if Kurt Vonnegut was born in this generation or, uh, like someone like George oh, Saunders got deep. I know it's a heavy comparison, but like I feel like with that flavor, uh, to use an ice cream term, we don't get a lot in our in comics or in a lot of like writing these days. And I guess what I want to ask you, um, uh, Will, like, where do you do when you need to like refresh your brain to come back at Ice Cream Man? Do you? Is there something you consume content-wise? Do you like ha go do something that is not related at all to writing or comics? Uh, how do you reload uh, well, the so, mechanism? I mean, the, the, the people you mentioned are um, uh, two of my writing heroes uh, amongst many. 
Um, and so when I need to kind of go back to the well, um, you mentioned George Saunders, especially, he's really good at, uh, you know, presenting these um, semi horrific, semi sad circumstances. Uh, my friend and I, we call it the, the Saunders turn. He's able mm. to give you just this little uplift of hope at the end, even though everything has gone wrong. Um, uh, and so he's definitely someone I go to for inspiration on like, you know, oh, I'm writing the script and it's kind of a, a bummer. How do I kind of bring it around to some sort of place where I'm not just kind of shoving it in people's faces that I'm actually presenting something that has a question or a proposition in it. Um, so Saunders is there, Grace Paley, um, mm. another one of my favorite short story writers, Dennis Johnson, my all time favorite writer. Oh. I um, love Dennis Johnson I, too. I mostly go to short stories for for my uh, fuel um, uh, pro short stories. So all those people: um, Tobias Wolf, uh, Jorge Luis Borges, uh, over in Martin's part of the world. So uh, just um, yeah, short story writers. Since we kind of are the short story comic, I guess. Mm. Well, uh, one, more, one more question. Oh. Oh. Sorry, one more question on on the writing and structure. <laughs> yeah. It feels like there's almost like a cursed math to your uh, your structure and your stories. Uh, they feel very like um, deliberate in their structure. Is that something? Do you ever come at a, a, one of these issues from that structural standpoint, or are you always sort of into the story and then finding the box to put it in? It really depends, issue to issue. Um, you know, some of our uh, more experimental issues have required literal math um, <laughs> to figure out how to, how to make it work, uh, whether it's the um, palindrome issue or uh, figuring out how to make this kind of sideways family tree story work um, in a way where the turning the pages made sense. Um, even on this issue that's coming out tomorrow, you know, we have to make a lot of uh, production related choices. Like how does this, uh, it's a pretty easy concept. There are two tiers of stories you have to read. One is the bright story. One is the, the sad story. Um, but how do you do that where they kind of mix well and where you don't get confused as to which story you're in and all this sort of stuff. Um, so there is a lot of cursed math and then also a lot of luck <laughs> and a lot of leaning on Martine to fix any of my mistakes. <laughs> Um, nah. that are in the script. Uh, speaking of leaning on Martine, I want to talk about the creepy factor because like some <laughs> of the smiles, which should be like bright and cheery Happy. in this comic Happy. are so creepy and haunt me. Uh, how, how did that like, uh, did you like send him a script that said like creepy smile and then Martine made it or like how did the creepy factor in this comic is unparalleled and and so haunting in such a kind of magical way uh, is that all you Martine or was that like how did that I think it's just my style Yo, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> See, your smile's not creepy, Martine. I don't know where you're getting this. Yeah, What's wrong exactly. with your, your, your mirrors? What's wrong with the mirrors in your house? Yes, I, actually, I use mirrors I, a lot. Yeah. I have, I don't know if it's issue one or maybe issues, maybe it was issue six, the cover. Uh, Martine sent me a picture that, you know, he took a picture of himself for reference to do the creepiest <laughs> smile possible. So wow. I have somewhere on my phone. Uh, Martine uh, doing an yeah, ice cream man have, level stop, smile. Yes, I even do have a picture with a knife with my one of my daughters, like acting, you know, and I have a, a, a knife in one one issue. The, the ice cream man ha held a knife to a to a girl. Uh, oh my god! But, yeah, yeah, that's creepy. wait, Martine. Are you acting these comics no, 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 out no, no, before no, you no, draw no, them no, with no, your no, family? No, oh my no, god! No, he so is the ice kids. cream man. He's the ice yeah. cream. No, no, Could you no, turn your camera? Is there a large cockroach in the corner of the room? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> shh, shh, keep quiet. Be quiet. Uh, Hold no, on. I, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I, I usually do uh, take pictures or or use a mirror and then try to um, uh, make. Uh, expressions go a little bit farther you know many times I draw a face like in terror and think this is not enough and then I start pulling the, the, uh, like the eyebrows up you know mm -hmm. and, and trying to to widen the eyes and yeah it's but but it's all based on a mirror and an expression yeah 
Wow, man. Yeah. Uh, I hesitate to ask this, but I'm curious anyway. I, I don't want Ice Cream Man to end at any point, but do you see an end point for the book? Is there some sort of chart plan, or is it just kind of go as far as you can go, push yourself as far as you can push yourself as long as you can take it? It's it's hard to answer. I mean, there are so many different things that go into that. Mm. Um, one is the most boring thing which is the economics of it right like yeah um if if all of a sudden our sales got cut in half like oh we'd have to think about maybe <laughs> winding up the series and, and that happens to people you know it's a hard tough market out there we're very lucky that people have kind of signed on for the long term uh, in the way that they have um but you know it's uh you're asking a lot of people go to the shop every wednesday they spend their hard-earned money there so uh you kind of have to earn it um, in order to get them to come back and, and buy your book again. Uh, that's that's the, the boring answer. Uh, the bigger answer is that um, I, my friend always tells me that uh, Ice Cream Man isn't a story. It's a storytelling engine, which I'm going to borrow that. I don't know if I fully agree, but uh, I like the idea of it, that it, you know, it's what he's speaking to is the what I said before about this freedom that we have to, you know, we're, we're not beholden to the issue before to do anything um you know to to connect any lines to do any sort of uh stuff that normal continuity heavy books uh have to do um so yeah if we if next issue we want to do it with everything upside down and um I don't know. It's and just uh, all the panels are pictures of Martine. Like we're allowed to do that. Um, <laughs> that Too so scary. Uh, Scariest so issue I, yet. I, Too scary. I would. I, so that's all to say that I would. Um, I would love to keep doing the book for as long as we can do it. I do have great the final issue um, kind of fully written in my head mm -hmm. uh, and in my notebooks. Wow. Um, but that issue was supposed to be like around issue 20 or so when we thought the book was oh, going to uh, fail. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then it just keeps getting pushed back into the future. So I think we're going to, we're going to party as long as we can. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Love to hear it. Uh, well, I'd love to hear that. And I'm very excited that Art Brute is joining the party as well. So the first issue of that comes out tomorrow. How many issues long is it currently? Uh, the first arc is four issues, and with enough support, uh, we would love to do four more. Awesome. Oh, cool. uh, it's so great. I yes. really, really enjoyed that book. Like I said earlier, it was, you could see the connections, but there's such a total difference from Ice Cream Man. It's so fun and so weird. I didn't say this earlier, but it reminds me pleasantly of Doom Patrol, I think, a little bit, just in terms of mm. like the very yeah. Grant morrison -y going inside paintings and fighting things very very fun so congratulations guys i think it's great uh, I thank you for people to check it out thank you guys really appreciate the support yeah love your work guys thank yeah, you thank you all right have a good night guys you too thank you later Bye -bye. all right there we go nice little awkward pause while we get <laughs> <laughs> don't out don't call out the pause. Oh, don't call oh, don't call you guys could have keep talking. You, you, that's part of your job. No, you got to talk while I'm doing the tech stuff. That's how no, when you're doing the when it's your turn. It's like, what are we going to do? <laughs> am I am I off? Can you guys hear me? We can. Oh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Oh, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Uh, uh, oh, great. nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, it's we, it's weird. I have a tab open. I can't see you, but. Uh, I can still hear you. <laughs> it's weird. We can't see you, and you're a ghost in our machine. Yeah. Feel 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 free to to hot mic just curse about how terrible <laughs> we are. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. But thank you guys very much, especially you know the day before our stuff comes out. Uh, it's really awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, have a good thank night, guys. Much. Thank it's you. Good night. You thank see, you. It's a pity you right, can't cheers. see me now. I'm with a giant cockroach right now. I knew oh, it. Oh, I can. Oh. I feel it. I feel oh, it. Oh man! <laughs> and oh, and what, one more thing because I said this on our last interview, and I think I gave them good luck, and it's totally has nothing to do with Messi, but uh, go Argentina. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Argentina. Thank there you go. very much, Will. It's all <laughs> your <laughs> support, <at> Will. <laughs> Thank you it's, very much. All right, from thanks, guys. All right, bye, bye, guys. See ya. Thank bye. you very much. Yeah. See ya. 
All right, we are going to move on with our next section, which is my favorite section because you all make it up. It's your audience questions. Yeah. And for audience questions, all you got to do is drop a question in Q&A over here on Crowdcast, or you can drop it in the comments over on uh, YouTube. 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 Thank you, YouTube. And what about Facebook? And Facebook. Facebook. Don't forget about Facebook. Yep. There you go. But first, oh, what's everybody drinking it. today? What's going on, Pete? I'm I'm Justin. healthy. I'm, I'm cracking uh, Modelo's all in nice, my hotel bro. room. Yeah, classic. I'm uh, marooned in Chatsworth, California, right now for some work. Um, I learned that this is. Um, oh, I'm shooting a commercial here um, later this week, but a Modelo it's actually, commercial. No, no, no. Um, similar. Something you will enjoy, though, Pete, um, that I'll tell you about later. Uh, you pro- can probably Duke? guess it is Mountain Dew, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do they give but, you all uh, the Mountain Dew you can drink? <laughs> yeah, like, can you bring back some Mountain Dew for your boy? And you don't uh, want to bring your work well, home with you. Come on. No, exactly. Now, I Mountain Dew is now just something that um, keeps me up nights, uh, just like it did before. Um, but I learned that where we're shooting this commercial, Chatsworth, California, is where a lot of pornography is made. So, um, oh, sweet. so who knows? I may get wrapped up in all of that. Um, but I went to, I walked to a gas station and bought a six pack of Modelo for yeah. uh, for the show. Look at you nice. walking in L.A. Excellent, yeah. Pete. What are you drinking? Uh, a little dogfish head uh, I got going on. A little here. dog food is what I little, thought you were going to say. <laughs> uh, it's called Namaste. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good one. Good one. Yeah, I went to the old Weg Malandos, and, uh, you know, you can pick your own. You know, a little variety pack. So I was just you gotta, trying I love the, different beers. No matter where you live, Pete, there's a Wegmans nearby, and I love it. That's my kind of lifestyle. <laughs> oh, come on, man. You can't, uh, you can't go outside of a Wegmans uh, radius. You know what I mean? 100%. It's not living. Uh, and I'm, of course, drinking a spiced fruitcake punch. Nice. What? Wow. <laughs> As usual. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. We could have always guessed you're drinking a spiked fruitcake punch. Uh, spiced cr- fruitcake punch. It's actually very nice. It's uh, pineapple juice, lemon, a little bit of uh, spiced rum, some uh, cake. cake. There's a big crumbled slice up of cake, cake in there. Yeah, crumbled mm-hmm. up cake. And a, and a punch from Pete's fist to Nat's stomach. There you oh, go. Can't wait. So we got a couple of questions here. Again, drop them in Q&A or in the comments. Why don't we start with this one on YouTube from Stray Beans. Question, what does James Cameron need to fix to make you be all in on Avatar 2? How much money do you think it will make? I guess to start off, Avatar 2, The Way of Water, coming out pretty soon after a very long delay. Uh, How are you feeling about it? Are you excited about it at all? Are you interested in seeing it or could you care less? Um, I am not a, a huge Avatar guy. Friend of the show, one of my best friends, John Gabris, is huge Gabris. into Avatar. Uh, he loves Avatar. He can't wait to see the movie. I thought the first one was, I don't know, just didn't really light me up. Uh, felt like pretty generic story-wise. Maybe this one, certainly the time and money has been spent. Maybe the story is going to be super interesting and different, but I guess I'll we'll tell you one out. thing that's... Uh you know, makes me kind of want to go see it is the 3D looks phenomenal. Uh, I went to go see Black Panther the 3D and the preview was so amazing. Like the characters were jumping out of the screen, sw- swimming around the theater. So it really looked like a 3D I'd never seen before. So uh, part of me wants to turn off my brain and go check it out uh, uh, just for the 3D effects alone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm in Justin's boat in terms of like, so the first one, fun movie, it was, it was good. I also didn't see it in theaters. I didn't see it until later at home, so that probably affected the experience quite a bit. But uh, I don't know. I'm interested to see it. James Cabard directs blockbusters. Like he directs really good looking. This is a blockbuster. Blockbuster. There's no doubt about that. So like. I don't know if it's going to change my life or anything like that, but I like seeing big movies that are fun in movie theaters. That sounds good to me. So why not? A popcorn movie? Yeah. Why I'm not? not going to be happy until I'm dropped into a tank of water every time the Navi swim, go swimming. Oh, is I that what the they're f- called? I remembered that, I'm sure. The other thing in terms yeah. of how much money do you make, uh, we're known box office analysis analyst. Uh, oh, we're mavens we're box office yes. mavens that's yes, us we're box office mavens i think the tracking for the opening weekend is something like 175 million dollars in terms of legs and everything 
I, I don't know, man. I think it's going to uh, fall a little short of that. I think it's going to be like 150, 125. Oh, wow. wow. Whoa. That's actually quite, that's Those quite are short. are hugely different numbers. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's going to hit. I think people still want this movie. I think, I mean, Top Gun um, Maverick had the, I want to say, fifth biggest um, movie uh, money taken um, of all time earlier this year. So it's that, that proof that people want to go to the movies. It just has to be a big movie. And this is a big movie. So I bet it hits. I bet it hits. Yeah. What's your what's your final number? Call your final number, guys, like we always do on the show with our box office. Yeah. And now it's uh 182. Wow. Oh, for opening weekend and total, yeah. Justin, total final number. Well, when do you count a final number? I mean, uh, uh, are you talking international or are you when talking you die. domestic? Well, by the point when you physically when die. die? When I die? When so you I'm, die. When my death, which is um, yes. 24 years and 7 days from today. Oh, yes. wow. Uh, Mark your calendars. Yeah, yeah so you got to include yeah. the re-release for Avatar three. Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know. Shots I mean, it's fired. gonna <laughs> take. It's gonna take a in lot, billions. A lot of money. It's it's going to make a lot. Pete, what's your final number? One fifty, one twenty five, one hundred seventy five, fifty, twenty five, zero. Any number, random number, zero. It made zero. No one saw it. Oh, Not a no single matter. person bought it. Yeah, I'm sticking with my original choice, somewhere between 125 and 150 is where I'm saying it's going to end And that's where it's going to end up. Very cool. All right, why don't we go to a question here on Crowdcast. This is from Kevin. What piece of comics merch would you be most excited to receive this holiday season? Great question. Whoa. Comics merch. Well, I'll tell you, somebody sent me a Miyazaki book that is really cool. So I was very excited about that. Nice. Do you want to mention what that book is, Pete? It's uh, it's a Miyazaki book that somebody sent me, and it's unbelievably <laughs> cool, and I can't wait to read so it. So we had a nice sponsorship deal with this book called Shooter's Journey by Hayao Miyazaki. Is that how yep. you pronounce his name, I believe? Mm-hmm. Who did Spirited Away and Tal's Moving Castle and a bunch of other ones, I believe. Um, anyway, this is his first graphic novel. Her ad flight is done, so we don't actually need to plug this just to be very clear for everybody. But it is a beautiful book. It's absolutely gorgeous. So how is it? Have you read it yet, Pete? No, no. I just got it. So I'm excited to kind of crack into it. You know, I'm waiting for like a train ride or some kind of trip. You know, maybe when I come to New York City to punch Nat. (laughs) For the holidays. Yeah. When you come to New York City to do a live show with your friends, um, Justin and Alex. Yeah, let's, let's do it. I'd love to. 2023, baby. Come out. <laughs> we'll keep putting that off. Uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> Until 2023. It's our 16th year. Who are you most excited to receive this holiday season? Man, I don't know. Uh, yeah, like if somebody gave me a nice omnibus collection, I think I'd be excited about that. That's not anything that I'd ever buy anything? for myself. Any omnibus? Literally, omnibus? literally any omnibus collection. Wow. Nice. Also, I was in Barnes and Noble the other day, and I saw the Mind Management board game, Ooh. which seems really interesting. Probably impossible to play, just like the comic book is insane to read. But I check that out; that would be fun. What about cool. you, Justin? Uh, I want some. Um, I was just thinking when we were talking about that book a couple weeks ago that um, Tony Harris did the art for. I want get. I want to get a, a Tony Harris piece of um, comic art. I think. Tony Harris, the um, artist on uh, Starman from back in the day. I'll throw out one more. Uh, any of the lock and key keys, that's not anything that I would ever buy for myself. But mm. if somebody got that for me, I would be like, that's pretty cool. I would love to get the the whole thing uh, collected. All the keys? Uh, no, the all the books. I just they have, have the that. key. Yeah. 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 The Key House Compendium. There you go. Uh, we got a couple of questions piling up here on YouTube, so let me jump over to that. Yeah, check out the tube, bro. Frederico Rosa says, how often do you guys reread comics and what usually makes you do it when it is not for the podcast? Well, there you go, Frederico. That's where you run into a snag. (laughs) Usually it's when we go back and visit something that we reread. I wish there was extra time. But I do think that, like, if we talk about something or something comes up that reminds me, you know, if, like Justin says something like, oh, this reminds me of an early whatever. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, man, yeah, that was cool. Uh, I'll go back and reread that. 
but other than that, we don't have a lot of free time because Zalvin is like fucking anytime there's free time, he's like, we're doing a podcast. We're doing a podcast, which is That's great. You know, it's works. important to have drive, mm-hmm. but unfortunately it doesn't leave a lot of extra time to enjoy things on your own. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's accurate. Real quick, how many factor. times have you watched the entire season of Ted Lasso this week? I'm just oh my god! Yeah, I mean, how can you count that? You know what I mean? It's uncountable. <laughs> really? Yeah, I would argue that's just something you could um, shave off a couple episodes. Maybe. <laughs> how could you shave off that though? You know what I mean? Um, I'll reread um, Starman, uh, the omnibuses, uh, probably once a year. I'll just uh, sort of plow through those and. Other books like Bone, I'll occasionally dip back into. uh, And I also have stacks of comics in my basement that are a little loose. Sometimes (laughs) I'll just grab a grab a Lucy from the middle, get into it. Yeah, I I feel like the stuff that I reread the most, and I'm not quite sure why, is the Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale, DC stuff more than anything. Like not just Batman, Long Halloween. I love Superman for all seasons. And there's yeah. times when I'll just pass by it in my bookcase. I'll be like, all right, I'll read that again. <laughs> wow. It's good the stuff. The books are calling to Alex. Yeah. Yeah. The books, the books, they are a calling. Anyway, this is from Nelson Martinez. Have you guys Nelson. checked out our, or interested in watching Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio? I read it took over 1,000 oh. days to make with over 40 animators. I'm excited to see what it looks like. Um, no, I haven't watched it yet. I, I'd be curious. I haven't heard anyone talk about it um, mm. as like, I must I've, see Pinocchio. I've heard it's phenomenal from a couple really? of people, actually. My film reviewer at work absolutely loved it. I heard from a couple of other film folks who saw it who so, said it was incredible. I think part of the issue is that yet another Pinocchio adaptation doesn't feel necessary, but... Apparently, this is much more true to the original story. This is incredible stop motion animation. It actually focuses a little more on Geppetto than Pinocchio, and is kind of about like it's a father guy. losing his son. Oh. So there's like oh, a deep man, emotional hook there. Yeah. Oh boy. So I don't know. I, I'm excited to check it out. This ties into the next question, but I wanted to watch it every Friday. We watch like a movie or some TV episodes or something mm. with the kids. I wanted to watch the Pinocchio instead. The next question here from Adam Marks on YouTube is, so no Willow podcast? Instead, we watched two episodes of Willow. So oh, yeah! Man. Willow I, is fire. It's I fire. I love Willow. I mean, if we do it, we could do a Willow podcast. It's like one s- tiny step outside of our normal coverage, but I'm here for it. Um, if yeah, Pete has the time, and I know he podcast. does. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been loving the Willow series. It is um, definitely a little bit more in the YA category if it, you haven't checked it out yet. But it's not. It doesn't sacrifice the tone from the original it's movie. Fire. There's there are funny moments. Um, there's a great. It, it's a little like janky in weird places, but so was the original movie. So mm-hmm. I like that. It matches in um, a lot of great ways. Willow somehow still isn't a great magician, which uh, yeah, I'm just. For. I mean, how can that still be a thing? Uh, yeah. To first go back to Nelson Martinez uh, 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 to, real quick, just to say thank you for commenting and watching on YouTube. Appreciate your dedication. And then secondly, now that you bring up Pinocchio and we talked about it, I'm very excited to check that out. Um, and then I've completely branked on what the second uh, question Willow, was. Willow, which you Willow. keep Willow. saying Willow's yeah. fat. Uh, I Yeah, I would... I mean, I I love every episode, so I definitely wouldn't mind talking about it because it is okay. Uh, let's go. Pretty good. What are we it's waiting for? Great. Uh, wait, what are we going to call it? What are we going to call the podcast? Um, Justin's favorite movie is Willow. That's what we should call the Willow podcast. They or won't they? Yeah. Uh, uh, you can feed a baby black root. <laughs> the Willow, the official Willow podcast. <laughs> Uh, great stuff. And th- that is it for your audience questions. Yeah. And now it is time for our next section, which is trivia. And for that, we're going to turn it over to Pete LePage. All right. We need a lovely volunteer, but this is the part where we give back to you, the lovely audience. It's an opportunity to win 25 free dollars to Midtown Comics or, of course, Long John Silver for some reason. Yep. 
for every yeah, reason. it's a it's a chance uh, to win twenty five bucks for either food or comics. Because what else are you gonna spend money on? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's food and yeah. comics and some kind of alcoholic beverage, and that's all you need in life. So uh, there you go. You could eat, eat comics and stop buying food. No, so after don't, you read them, don't of eat art, bro. You don't eat art. Okay. The food I cook is art. Whoa. Well, I'll tell you what. If we don't have a volunteer, I have a charity in mind. Ooh, great. That let's do that. Okay. Should yeah. we do that? Yeah. All right. Well, so. let's wait. you got to wait a second for the streams. He waited. He YouTube. waited. Nobody's jumping. It's you fine. You never know if someone on the tube is going to write me in the comments, and then pretty soon. Well, I'm sudden. assuming he's monitoring that. And since he said nobody's jumping, let's what if roll. He, he's asleep at the switch. We got Michael Tillman in the in the. Uh, <sighs> Oh, I'll do it for Alex's charity. Okay, let's see. Uh, the Till Man. User, delete. That's right. M to the T. Hmm. All right, let me see if I can bring... Oh, uh, we also have Stray Beans. But here, I'm going to see if I can bring Michael Tillman into the main stage. Michael, where? Put in headphones. If you don't have headphones, I'm bringing in... Wow. It's a little heads up, a little uh, otherwise a little headphones a crazy up. echo going on. Yeah, exactly. You know what? This is a good platform, and I'm really enjoying it. Oh, yeah, that's no, great. No, oh, no notes. You really, yeah. Uh... Well, I love when a platform takes a leap forward, and um, there are no notes about it. Yeah, <laughs> um, definitely. If Michael Tillman can't come in, do you want to go with Stray Beans, a new uh, person? We'll see. Uh, no headphones handy. Uh, All right, I'll tell you what. Uh, Michael Tillman can do it for the charity, but answer in the comments. How about there that? There we go. There we go. So the charity wins. I was going to suggest, uh, let me see if I can find the link here. I'll drop it in the chat. But Peter David, one of our favorite writers, mm. is not doing that great. He is having some health issues. And, um, yeah, I figured we could try to help raise some money for that. Um, nice. He's met his goal or Graham Murphy, who's raising it on behalf of Kathleen David, has met the goal, but still worth doing it. You can check it out at GoFundMe.com slash F slash Peter dash David dash fund. Uh, but Pete, why don't you take it away? And Michael, just answer the letter of the correct answer in the t- t- chat here on Crowdcast. All Peter. right. Today's trivia is on topical comic news and a small... Okay. No- the small nod to the legend, Clarence Gilliard Jr., R.I.P. Please listen to all three options before making your selection. Here we go. Question number one. Marvel has a new online comic with fan favorite character blank. Is it A, Jeff the Landshark, B, Mike Crazy Legs Johnson, or C, Marshall Dancing Elk Lewis? None of those sounded right. Well, uh, uh, A is a Marvel comic book character that is mm-hmm. a fan favorite, so, you know. Uh, Michael Tillman says the crazy leg Jeff the He's Landshark. combined the answers. That's, you can't do that. Uh, I appreciate the can, creativity. Well, I guess we're not going to donate to Peter David. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is correct. It is A. Well done, sir. Here we go. Question number two. Mike Mignola drew the art for the new blank. Is it A, the new Hellboy video game, B, the new Hellboy uh, trainer card game, or C, Mary Ellen Trainer. So is it A, which is makes sense, and the only thing that's uh, a real uh, property that is the answer to this? Uh, yes, you are correct. The new uh, video game by Hellboy. It looks amazing to have his art kind of be the game, which is pretty crazy. It's like playing in a comic book. All right, question number three. Dark Horse mm. is doing a new c- classic comic based on what popular property? Is it A, Stranger Things, B, Grand Theft Auto, or C, Grand L. Bush? So it's either A, Stranger Things, which I recommend, or you could be completely wrong. That is correct, Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. Wow. Yeah, for Dark Horse. Excited about that. All right, there we go. Congratulations, Michael. You have won $25 to nope. help out. Oh, wait. Well, he, we're giving, yeah, we're giving it a charity. He didn't win it. He, he still, was, he still won it. He won. He's choosing yeah, right. he won it for the charity. That's, okay, great. That was great. the end of the sentence. I had like okay. two more words to get. 
My Sometimes you got to wait to the end of sentences is a lesson I haven't learned yet, but I heard it a lot. Oh, okay. And is the movie Die Hard? Yes, the 1988 classic Christmas movie, Die Hard. Mm. Nice. Now, as we all know, new comic books are coming out all the time. What are you guys looking forward to that's coming out this week or looking backward to that came out today? Well, uh, oh, wow. I, I got a bunch of them. This was a hell of a stack for me. I'm very excited to talk to you guys about all these books. But uh, Shirtless Bear Fighter uh, 2, issue mm-hmm. number 5 is amazeballs. Radiant Black number 20 is amazing. Planet wow. Hulk World Breaker number 2 is bananas. And Batman Spawn number 1 melted my mind. Mm-hmm. Melted your mind. That's right. Oh, that explains several things that happened tonight. Justin, take it away. Um, I guess I'll have to shout out... Um, uh, well... I mean, Art Brew and Ice Cream Man, we've already talked about those, but those truly were my um, top of the stack books. You're not just saying that? I'm not just saying that. And I think if it was clear in the glowing commentary I was just giving Mm -hmm. earlier on in this very episode, those are two absolute faves um, of mine. I I do like how most of our questions are, your work is amazing. Care to respond? Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Well, and I... I mean, I felt, and I know I was doing this, but I was like, compliment, compliment, compliment. How do you do that? (laughs) (laughs) Why? How do you make amazing things? Yeah. Um, I'm going to also shout out Wildcats number two um, by our guy, uh, Bergy. Uh, yeah, which is a fun read really? going forward. And Kevin in the comments wanted to plug um, uh, Justin's Wednesday show, Characters Welcome. So that's a great plug. Wow, uh, Kevin's working for right you uh, as a part-time intern. Yeah. Tomorrow yeah. on YouTube at 8 p.m. Eastern. Excellent. I oh, am going to give a, a shout out to A I... Vicious Circle, number one, from Boom Studios, written by oh, Matson yes. Tomlin, art by Lee Bermejo. I don't want to blow up the review yes. too much, but... Always looking forward to a Lee Bermejo project. His art is absolutely stunning. If I was to mention this book, I would say you are not going to expect what this looks like or what this yes. is or anything like that. And perhaps Or where the story goes. Or where That's the story TV, goes. Baby. Uh, if you pick it up, maybe you're going to be blown away. I guess we'll see what happens. And I guess folks, we'll see. that is it for this week's show couple of people we want to thank. We want to thank W. Maxwell Prince and Martin yes. Barraza for coming on. Don't forget to check out Art Brute, number one, Please as well do. as Ice Cream Man, number 33, coming out tomorrow. Next week, Dennis Robinson is going to be here to talk about Lycan Solomon's Odyssey. Wow. Also, James Third is going to be here to talk about Bob James Phantom, as yes. well as a bunch of other projects. So that should be a lot of fun. If we got a bunch of other podcasts, you should check out the Doom Room or Doom Patrol podcast rolling out every Thursday. What did you want to say, Justin? Do you have a note? Aren't we doing some sort of year in review situation coming up here pretty soon? Oh, we should mention that. If you have ideas for the best comics of the year or the best graphic novel slash trade of the year, let us know on Twitter, over email, in our Patreon uh, wherever you want to let us know, we're going to factor yeah. in fan votes as well as our own, and we'll do that in the last show of the year. But, as I was saying, the Doom Room, our Doom Patrol podcast every Thursday, Marvel Vision, our Marvel podcast, we're re-watching yeah, the movies every them. Friday with thing. some very fun guests. Patreon.com slash comic book club to support this show and all the shows we do. Subscribe on Apple, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice at Comic Book Live on Twitter, Twitter, Comic Book Club Live on Instagram and TikTok, ComicBookClubLive.com for this podcast and many more. Until the next screening of the entirety of Ted Lasso, good night. <laughs> good night, everybody. Take care of yourself out there. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.